Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. In New York, I'm Jordan Edwards. In Los Angeles, we got Demi Ramos. It's the last show of the year. And for the last show of the year, we have an incredible guest who has one of the, the most recognizable and distinctive voices in pop music. Let's bring her out. Please welcome Joss Stone. Hi. What is going on? Ah, oh, it's so lovely to see you. How's it going? Thanks to you. We're good. We're good. How's it going there? We, we understand that you're right in the throes of motherhood. How's motherhood going for you? Oh, it's the best thing. It honestly is the best thing. It's the best gig I've ever had. I can put that <laughs> out there very confidently. And her name is Violet? Yeah, Violet Melissa. How did you choose that name? Was it like... Was something well, like that? you know what? Choosing a name is so hard. I cannot tell you how difficult it is. Mm. I had a book of 98 names or something crazy like Whoa. that. I know, I, I don't know. And this had been going on for 10 years. I'd been planning, you know, what was my baby gonna be called for 10 years, even longer probably. And then Violet wasn't even in that list. <laughs> Can you believe Whoa. that? My mum actually, she suggested it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, um, my auntie, she died and her name was Melissa and she had um she died the day after Violet was born and I couldn't I couldn't decide what to call her and I just I just felt like that's the way that we keep her that's the way that we keep Melissa with us and um and we'll tell Violet many stories about Mel and it's a nice way to you know keep those stories going she was such a really beautiful person and um she was a teacher um, she used to break into song all the time and dance all the time. So I think we want to keep her. So we do in my baby. <laughs> so Beautiful. that's why she's Violet Melissa. You have a lot of stuff going on right now. You have new music out. Um, you just released a new music video last month and you have a new single out, which is beautiful. Now you are going on tour with Corinne Bailey Ray. Let's talk about the tour first. Do you, have you known, I mean, I just assume that all British singers know each other. Have you known Corinne for a long time? Or how Do you know what? I, I don't know Corinne properly. I only know her kind of in passing because we've been on like three or four gigs the same, you know? So she would play one night, I'd play the next, or, you know, um, maybe we'd be on the same night, but on different stages or something. So we do run into each other, but we have never toured together. We've never sang together. Um, and it was just suggested to me by my booking agent, you know, hey, do you want to do a co-headline with Corinne Bailey Ray? Uh, yes, mm. definitely, <laughs> because she's amazing. You know, she's a lovely, she's a lovely girl, as far as I can tell. You know, she's always so, 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 so sweet. Her music is very sweet. Um, and I know Violet is going to really love the music. So that's a really Violet's going. bonus. So, Are you taking uh, Violet on tour with you? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she comes with me everywhere. And also mm. Corinne's kids are coming too. She's got two. Oh, so, wow. So maybe they'll, yeah. they'll be friends, hopefully. Oh yeah, I hope so. That'd be nice. Mm. Violet will be just one then. So oh. hopefully they'll be able to hang out. It'll be yeah. fun. I yeah, want to yeah, talk yeah. about Never Forget My Love, the music video that just came out a month ago. Yeah. You are looking hot. Mm. Oh, thank That you. video is popping. It gave me like... Ryan Carey, like 2000s vibes. I want to know about the making of that video. It's just like, it's infectious. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. Yeah. Thank you, honey. That's very sweet. You know what? It's all just a lot of makeup. No. <laughs> and, and a wind machine. <laughs> yeah, there is a wind machine is working, is doing, doing some work there. Yeah. That's all it is. You know, it's called show business for a reason. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and, it was and, really fun. I wore that little sparkly outfit because Dave... Dave Stewart wasn't there, but I made the record with him. And it's also being released on his record label, but he wasn't at the video shoot. So I thought, right, I think we need a bit of Dave. Um, Dave and Dave. he's proper rock and roll. Um, he can be very glamorous, very fabulous. Um, it's not really, it's not really my usual vibe, but I love it. So I just said, hey, let's, let's just do an ode to Dave. And then we ended up wearing that sequin thing and now it's turned into a bit of a thing and i i need to find some more glitter jumpsuits for my tour so anyone know where they are just you know let us know i feel like demi probably knows where they are in new york she could yeah probably, you know okay uh, yeah. great let me know honey <laughs>
So that song, you you made this album with Dave Stewart, like one of literally one of the best producers of all time. I yeah, mean, his yeah. track record um, in the States, we know him primarily from the Eurythmics and yeah. the stuff you do with Annie Lennox, but he's done so much stuff from people, Aretha Franklin, Mick Jagger, no doubt, all these yeah. people. Yeah. And you'd worked with him before in the past. So can you tell us about how you first became acquainted with him and how you ca came to work together? Yeah. So... When I was about 17, he was making the soundtrack to the movie Alfie. Um, and I don't know why, you have to ask Dave, I, I suppose I should ask him, so I have the answer for this, but I have no idea why he wanted me to sing on that record, but he did. Um, so he contacted my manager at the time and I got this request like, hey, do you wanna sing with well, Dave and also Mick Jagger was on the um, the soundtrack too. I was like, wow, yeah, of course. So I went down there and I sang um, the song Alfie, which is um, a Burt Bacharach song, um, which is funny because now we've kind of made this album that with Burt Bacharach in the back of our minds as far as like how the songs are composed. Um, so it's all come full circle. So yeah, I did that that one song and I ended up doing three songs on that. Um, soundtrack. One of them was a duet with Mick Jagger. I mean, I was like, what is going on? That's be so wild to do that at 17. It'd be yeah, mind blowing. It was completely wild. It was like, how is this happening? It was a bit um, surreal, you know, uh, but now it's just normal. <laughs> Weirdly. So yeah, I met him there, and then we were friends ever since. What's it like being in the studio with him? Is he uh, pretty relaxed? I mean, personally, he just, you talk about his style. He's, he seems like he's one of the coolest people on earth. Like yeah. he just, like, just looks like he's so cool. So what is he like in the studio? He's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave's very, he's very fun. So anything that is, um, I say, I say it like he's, I don't want you to get it twisted because when I say fun, I mean, he is fun, he's playful, he's all that, but he knows what he wants. So if somebody is to kind of go left of center, he's not the type of fun that will be like, yeah, whatever, play whatever you want. This is a laugh, we're having a party. He's not that fun, you know, it's not that type of thing. But you feel like you are playing like in a sand pit as a 10 year old. You don't feel like you're under stress, but he knows exactly where he wants to go with the music. Um, and he surrounded himself with fantastic musicians. Uh, one yeah. of the arrangements on this are incredible. Like yeah. the, the new single Breaking Each Other's Hearts, there's these gorgeous strings and yeah. and you had the horn section on the previous single. Yeah. Um, did you, I mean, were, were, did you do this old school style where you had this big room in the studio with this huge orchestra, like, you know, like a Motown Stax record kind of thing or? or do you how know what, it sounds work? like that, doesn't it? <laughs> it definitely mm. sounds like that. That's how I used to make records. Those days, I don't know. I wonder if that would ever happen again. Probably, but it's it's so crazy when you do that. It's very like union, and you've, you're on a time <laughs> and it's thousands and thousands to do this. So Dave had this wonderful idea. Um, so we we made the the string parts. Um, I would kind of sing down a few ideas. Like on, I've just got Garage Band on my computer, so I take the songs home and then sing a few lines you know oh maybe i want it to go da, 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 da. something something as simple as da, da 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 and then um we sat down with tim the string arranger who had just like the week before <laughs> been writing strings for burt backrack so that was perfect timing because that's what we wanted yeah um and he went through the ideas and then he made it into this wonderful wonderful thing wonderful arrangement um and then Dave was like, why don't we just get six players in a room? It doesn't have to be crazy union on a time clock. It can be in someone's living room. And it was. And then we just lay them on top of each other. Just multi-track it. Yeah. So yeah. It's, and, and they're all playing live, you know. It's nothing. There's nothing like programmed in there. So it doesn't wreck the sound. Awesome. This sounds like. To me, it sounds like there's 30, 40 people playing because technically there is just at different times. Yeah, <laughs> and they're yeah, just yeah. six people. But I think mm. that's a brilliant idea. I've never done that before. And it sounds- It sounds amazing. Gosh. It sounds way bigger than what you just described. Yeah, yeah. But it was just someone's living room. <laughs> yeah. So you, a lot of people don't know that it's like a new thing. You have a podcast. 
Oh yeah, I have a podcast. Yeah, Can I do. Tell me your podcast and what got you into podcasting? What's your favorite podcast? And who's your dream guest on the show? Oh gosh. Oh God, I have a dream guest, but everyone gets angry when I say my dream guest. <laughs> I'm so controversial. Um, okay, so hmm, what's my favorite podcast? I don't really listen to. Do you know what Joe Rogan's probably my favorite podcast? I know he's like the biggest one, so it's easy to say that. And also, there was another one called Desert Island Disc, which I like. Um, and plen- was there one called, was it called Plenty of Fish or Big Fish? It's Are you really- a true crime person? There's a lot of true crime podcasts. True crime. There was one of these two American guys, actually. God, what's it called? Something about fish. Bollocks. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. We'll, we'll find out, and we'll when we when we we'll, yeah find we'll out. Put it at the it bottom. In there, but it's yeah. these two guys that just discuss random things and they've got these wonderful american accents so for me we love that and they're just like mates and they just sit there and discuss like random things in life like how people make crisps or something weird um or it can be like the war you know it can be heavy or really really light um so i i like that silly kind of chat anyway so my podcast is called a cup of happy and i'm actually about to um start making um another bunch of episodes so hopefully we'll have something for you guys uh next year early next year would be really nice um i started it because all my gigs are gone and i had some free time and my friend rich has been making podcasts for years and asking me to do one and then he calls me when all my gigs disappeared like every musician's gigs disappeared and he was like hey so you have some time now you want to do that podcast (laughs) so um i said yeah okay why not not doing anything else. So um, we called it A Cup of Happy because Mm -hmm. I really am very, very interested in why humans do what they do. And my job, I believe, is to bring good feeling, um, happiness, as as, as much happiness as I can bring to people. I believe that that's my job. I do that using the tool of singing. But when that tool is taken away, doesn't mean that I have to stop doing my job. It just means I have to change my tool. So um, with songs, you know, I might sing the saddest song in the world, but it helps somebody feel comforted because they're going through the same thing. They don't feel alone anymore. You know, or you can sing a happy song, which helps people dance. Um, And it's kind of the same thing with the podcast. Um, I interview people that understand more about the human brain than I do. And some of the stories are sad and some of the stories are happy and beautiful. Um, I just found it so interesting because even down to what you eat, you know, there was this one chap had written a book called The Psychobiotic Revolution. And it's so amazing. Like he said, fiber makes you happier. It is like proven. Also... If you are depressed, there is a um, there is a bacteria in your gut that means you're not going to you won't be able to get rid of that depression on on your own. You know, it's in your gut. You need to remove that bacteria. You need to change the way that you eat because that is make is sending messages to your brain. It's as if you have a brain in your gut. We do, you do, kind of, and they work wow. independently and then together. So, so that is news to me, and. If somebody can hear something like that on my podcast, I don't bloody know. I'm just asking the questions. I know as much as anyone else. Yeah. But it's, fun to play, it's fun to play journalist though, right? It's fun to kind, kind of, of be on the other yeah, side of it. I guess it is. Oh my God, I'm a journalist. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> no, but it's good. It's good. You've got to ask the right questions. I think that's really an important job. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, Joss, we have to let you go. You have so much to do. We really appreciate you taking your time out to talk oh, to us. Thank Good luck you. with the new album. Congratulations on the video. Looks amazing. Thank you, And darling. we hope to see you on tour with Corinne Bailey Ray yeah. um, right after New Year's. That'd be wonderful. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Take care. We'll talk to you later. All right. Look after yourselves. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That was the amazing Joss Stone. What a little force of nature. That was like just a fun, we like crammed so much. She's a legend. She's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, and hopefully like probably one of the on. most humble people and most like well-spoken and fun people we've had, I think. Absolutely. Know. So, um, so yeah, so Joss has a, a new album coming out in early 2022 and hopefully we can have her back on uh, when that album comes out. 
Before we end this show, Demi, we got to talk about our favorite music of the year. Now, I know that you are, uh, we put these lists together. And um, so let's just talk about, first of all, let's talk about trends, Demi. What, what did you notice in terms of trends in <clears throat> music? Um, any kind of movements or anything, oh, um, you know, big picture that you, that you saw this year? Well, I think we had, everyone had a really tough year 2020. That was kind of crazy. And I think prior to that, there was a lot of authenticity lacking in mainstream music. Um, and so I think, I think 2021 was kind of the rise of the indie star, as well as the beginning of, you know, uh, I guess a rock and roll movement kind of brewing. And uh, God damn it, we, we're in New York and we kind of see that's what we're around. I think that's the kind of music that we're around and it's kind of cool to watch, no? Let, let's talk about New York, Timmy. Um, before we throw up our, our, our picks for the best, for our favorite songs of the year, I moved to New York about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed right away was there was a ton of really talented up and coming female singer songwriters women singer songwriters coming up on the rock side and now you're finally getting to see that um for example yesterday pom pom squad mia baron released <laughs> a cover video of not a surf's popular a shot at the same high school with matthew cause on background vocals um and i think that's a great example of a, of a new york rock act a female-led New York rock act coming out. I've actually never seen them. Isn't that crazy? Oh, such such a good. I feel like uh, you brought them up a few times. I've never seen. Yeah, them. well, well, Mia was one of the first people uh, musicians that I photographed when I first moved here. I photographed her in the East Village oh. in like 2018 or something. But um, in addition to Pom Pom Squad, there's a lot of other uh, bands that have come out of New York and um, even like into DC and Philly. Uh, most of them. Uh, uh, there's a lot of just a really lot of strong female singer songwriters coming out right now um, on the rock. And by rock, I mean uh, guitar based music. And, and I think Demi Ramos is, is part of that. And uh, your, your buddies jigsaw youth um, are part of that. So uh, how do you feel jigsaw to be par part of that world? Wow. Um, I think it was destined to happen. Yeah. I think you music like, comes you in know, a cycle. We talk about you know? there's no scene in New York, but I think yeah. there is kind of a scene in New York. You You're know? right. That's that's funny you say that because when we had, for example, we had on, who's when we had on that that said that there's no scene? I think Porches has said there's no scene. I think, who else said that? Well, I think people that the Knox uh, mentioned that there wasn't a scene anymore. That right, all right. Well, you're, you're, of... you're talking uh, people like Porches and 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 the Knox. They came up in like you know 2010, 11, um, and they're already famous enough that they don't. They're not ingrained mm -hmm. in the day to day. You know, playing shows in DIY venues. You know that the the places that you off the rooftops that get shut down. Um, my favorite Demi, my favorite, one of my favorite photos of 2021 was oh, you God. posing with the cop who broke up your show on the rooftop over the summer. That was great. That was, that was such a baller moment. Love it. I mean, I had, you know, I had to get one for the books, I guess, you know? Yeah. 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 But um, it was good. That one was good. We actually, for that particular show, we actually tried a few times mm -hmm. and that was the one that the cops came right when the bill was over. So that was good. Yeah. And, and that was a dope show too, because the way the rooftop was set up that you kind of had this like ledge where the audience sat <laughs> and then you guys were on the other side of the roof. It was such a cool setup. All right, Demi. So let's get to it. Let's talk about our favorite songs, albums, music videos of the year. Uh, let's start with, with your choices. What, what did you have? The first one. Okay. Turnstile glow on. So that we have the rise of like the indie alt star coming back in 2021 we see it where they've always existed um you know there was always like a people always love i mean my my crew we have a few we have a sound a soundcloud uh catalog that is completely of unknown music right unknown artists but i feel like some some of these bands and some of these artists are becoming more mainstream and they're selling bigger and bigger venues 
which is something even if they've been around for maybe a decade, they haven't been able to do before. And one of the examples of that is Turnstile. They're a hardcore band and they kind of went for a softer sound with this album uh, and they killed it. And they're, they're selling out. Actually, they're on tour Show Me the Body right now. New York City band. Yeah. And yeah, you should check that album out. And the, album, the cover art is so cool. For, for a hardcore band, it's like a pink, a baby pink with like clouds. It's just super cool. And people are just trying different things, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't think people are going to start making, you know, Miley Cyrus is going to make a Led Zeppelin sounding album. But it's yeah. going to be kind of, like you said, guitar paced, guitar based music. With modern here's a, here's a question for you, Demi. Is is using pad drums and electronic mm-hmm. drums over a live kit? Is that rock and roll enough for you? <clears throat> so rock and roll is rock and roll is an attitude, you know. Um, it's something you can't fake. You can fake pop music. You can fake any kind of genre, I think. But there's an authenticity. Um, there's a rawness to rock music. There's an attitude that you can really make with any sound. Um, but when the moment you're trying to fake something or do it on purpose or do something like to make it sound this way, it just, that's not what rock and roll was, was for, you know, this is not professor Demi in the classroom. That's the one genre where anything goes, you know, you can say anything, you know, and it's, it's the genre of the outcast. And I think like, that's why people get upset when people try to emulate this, like, you know, how do you say the sound or you know, the style that other rock artists have kind of brought to the table um, mm-hmm. because it, it is the one place where you can just, where anything goes, you know? Yeah. So don't yeah. try to like yeah. market that into something to, to sell something. It's kind of corny. That's a yeah. Of um, yeah. 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 And, and that's, I think that that's, uh, really, <laughs> what, oh yeah. Ethno musical. There yeah. You go. Yeah. Shout out to our producer Hope with the yeah. titles. We need a jacket with that, you know, stitched onto it or something. It. So, so the biggest complaint about um, you know, we 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 I mean, we mentioned a long time ago, uh Olivia Rodrigo, good for you, and how that specific song I thought it was a good step forward because even though it was kind of uh early two thousands, you know, pop punk sound, at least it was a top forty big hit song with a rock sound and so hope if you could put up my list real quick or the top part of my list so a couple of these are be sweet and kiss me more uh have been on a lot of lists they've been on the pitchfork you know top 100 songs list and they've been on other blog lists of the best songs of the year but also my list i want to point out that i had uh uh billy eilish on there if you yeah i put billy eilish happier than ever on here because it was obviously there's no pop star at the time um, at this time bigger than Billie Eilish. And that song is a rock song. The last, especially the last part of it is, you know, you've got these, you blown out, uh, uh, blown out kit drum. It's a song we've all heard. It's been played over and over again, but I think it's important for rock to move forward when uh, really big pop musicians like Billie Eilish, who is on the alternative side, I get it. Uh, her sound is more of a rock and roll sound anyway. But uh, I thought this was uh, great to put out this song, you know, the title track from her album. And then I also have one of our uh, guests, uh, Ambar Lucid, Lizard, which was off her EP, uh, Get Lost in the Music, which is a really great song. And then Hush by the Marias, which is an amazing kind of icy synth pop song, kind of reminiscent of St. Vincent or something. Really love that. What else you got, Demi? What what else did you enjoy this year? Um. <clears throat> A lot of people had mixed feelings about this one, but Lana Del Rey, Blue Bannisters, that album, um, I think she let loose on this one. I love a Lana Del Rey album. I, I, you know, I'm a Lana Del Rey fan from when she was Lizzie Grant and was releasing like these cool, very DIY videos. Oh, did you, are you, were you really like into the, like the pre Lana Del Rey? Like you were. Oh my God. 100%. And there's nothing like her. You can't copy that. And I think we're seeing her, I think she's like in her third, she's like 36 now or something. And it's just her music. It's, it's cool to see her grow and grow up yeah. into like a woman and the things that she talks about. <clears throat> how you doing? The things that she talks about, you can just see, um, 
you know how some artists try to make the same song or the same album that worked for them 10 years ago and it's very obvious i think that she's been very natural with her releases and kind of like where she's at and not really paying too much attention to what's trending and i think that's why she stands out and is one of the best artists um of modern times right now i think that's one thing that's a goal for any artist is to get a sound that's so you that people love so much that you don't need to follow trends um, yeah. We haven't talked about Adele. Adele, of course, released new music, uh, which is a once in a five, six year thing. And she continues to not have to worry about trends because she's made her own lane and people enjoy her. So- it's so classic that you don't need to follow trends. And her, so- and I saw an interview that she had recently that she basically was like um, talking about her new album. And she said that this album wasn't made for kids on TikTok. She's like, why would I make music for kids on TikTok? Who's making music for people that are my age? And she has a good point. I think that people are so, especially PR, I get like PR and label teams are just like, they're not, they, they aren't musicians. So they're just trying to do the right thing and try to figure out what's trending. That's kind of their job. However, um, you know, we can't forget that Fads are fads for a reason. They're here one day and they're out the next. So, you know, she's kind of smart with that. And Demi, you personally have dealt with the whole fads trying to be thrust upon you. Um, we haven't talked about, mm-hmm. you, we keep your, your, your music career kind of out of the show for the most part, unless you have some new music out. We mention it, we plug unless it. Unless you publicly embarrass me with my Spotify <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> no, I know you just, you love me. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, your, I'm like your proud big brother. I you know? know, I know. You're just like, yeah. Demi's put on a song track. It was like, oh my God. Yeah. Which shout, um, also shout out Demi's mom. She's one of our original fans. Yes. And he's always been the supportive. Show, yes. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. But, but back to what I was talking about, Demi, mm-hmm. um, you're right in the middle. We're talking to these artists who have a lot of, we, we kind of have two types of artists when it comes to the show. We have the artists with a long track record, like we just had with Joss Stone. Um, we, you know, we had Seether on, uh, Sean Morgan from Seether. We've had all these really established artists and we have the younger artists uh, like, like Swaco, um, like hey. Brent Cartelli who are just right in the middle at the very beginning of their careers, which is kind of where you're at in terms of your, uh, your music output. Um, so as someone who's on the ground right now, how are you navigating the trends and people trying to thrust trends upon you while trying to maintain the sound that you want to get out? How are you doing with that personally? I'm just having a lot of fun right now. I think it's a really exciting time on the contrary of like everything with the fads and TikTok and Instagram, all that stuff. It's an exciting time for music because people, because of these apps and because everyone has the internet are a lot more receptive to new things. So I think it gives us a lot more room to be alternative. I think new artists, um, maybe more so than it was 10 years ago before like the Instagram and, you know, just kind of like social media age. So I think it's, it's an exciting time for music and, and uh, you can be an artist that and put out something that is kind of not what's trending and find a group of people that like it across the world because of the internet. And that's super exciting at the same time. I guess that's it for the year, Demi. We are done for 2021. Cry. Yeah. Can so, we just say this started out as a quarantine project yeah. and we were literally just having so much fun um, and kind of like we kind of grew together, I think, as as hosts. Um, and it's just been it's just been a really, really cool ride. And we're just getting started, aren't we? Oh, I'm, I'm ready to host real like i'm ready to go on cnn right now or espn yeah. i'm ready to go let's do actually it. we're scheduling mgk for 2023 right now 2023 and we gotta get him a 18 <laughs> months in advance yeah but like you know yeah so stay tuned yeah <laughs> 
All right. Thank you to our listeners. Thank you to our moms. <laughs> thank you to Pop Dust and all of the, who have supported us throughout the year. Thank you to Josh Stone for being on our final show. We'll see you guys in 2022. Until then, check out all our past episodes on iHeart Radio, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. So until 2022, we'll see you later. Mm-hmm.